Hey there, Nextutac is here. In this video, we're gonna go over how to save and load Docker images from a zip file. This could be really useful if you wanna transfer an image from one server to another and you're not using a Docker registry. For example, maybe you have a CI server where you're building and testing images there, and now you wanna send that over to production. This could be a little bit more useful than building your image directly on your production server because that's gonna take quite a few resources, right? There's gonna be network, CPU, memory, and disk load while your application builds there. And meanwhile, in production, your application might be a web application serving requests for your customers. But more importantly, there might be a very subtle difference in the dependencies that you get when you build it on your server versus CI. For example, if you build something in CI and then five minutes later build it in production, if you don't version lock every single application and system dependency that you have, there is a chance in that you know five minute period of time or whatever it happens to be that you could get a slightly newer version of some package in production. And now suddenly what you're running in production isn't exactly what you tested in CI. And you know, one of the benefits of Docker is, you know, you can build an image in one environment, have confidence that it's going to work if it worked there, and then be able to run that exact image over in a different environment. But yeah, in this case, when you build it in production later, maybe it is slightly different. You also have to worry about some like really weird edge cases around networking. Like for example, maybe you build your image in CI and it works completely fine, but then five or 10 minutes later, you build it in production, but one of your package repositories for apt or you know PyPy or RubyGems or you know NPM or whatever happens to be down. So now you can't even build your image in production. Meanwhile, you know it worked totally fine in CI 10 minutes ago. There's also another really interesting use case around you know, wanting to save and load images to a zip file. And that is when dealing with air gap systems. For example, you know, one of your servers or whatever, you know, it doesn't need to be like a internet server on the public internet, but yeah, it has no access to the network. So what do you do? Well, you can save your image to a zip file, put it on an external drive, and then you can connect that drive to your air gap system and then load it in there. And now suddenly you can run your image, you know, without needing to transfer anything over the network. So yeah, let's go over some commands to see how all the stuff works here. So I've got this one little web server image. I've done videos about this one in the past uh, when building multi-CPU architecture Docker images here. I'll leave a link up to a card if you want to see that one. Feel free to use whatever image that you want here. But yeah, we're going to be saving this image out to a zip file, loading it, and even transferring it over to a server I set up uh, ahead of time here. But yeah, let's go and check it out here. So we can just run uh, Docker image save here, and we need to provide some type of output. So in this case, we can do dash dash output, or we can just do dash O. Uh, feel free to use whatever one you might want here. And when it comes to the server name itself, you can actually uh, name it whatever you want. It doesn't need to be uh, gzipped, but we are gonna be gzipping it here, just a little bit more efficient, right? And then we should put in the Docker image along with the tag. So you saw a little ID there before. Yeah, that's a spoiler that uh, we're not gonna use the ID and we'll go over why not in a few minutes here. But yeah, in this case, we're going to save our image out to this file on disk. It could be any path that you want here. And then yeah, we're gonna be dealing with this Docker image name and then this tag. So let's run it and see what happens. So it's gonna take whatever, I don't know, five, 10 seconds. Uh, and now we have on disk right now, a file called web server that tar dot cheesy in the current directory. Of course, you can put whatever path that you want here instead. But that's only one half of the equation, right? We just save this thing out to disk. But now uh, we need to load it in so it's a proper Docker image so you can run the container and do whatever you want here. But to keep me honest here, uh, let's go and actually delete this one image up here. So I'll do a Docker image RM. We'll force it, why not? And then, yeah, we just deleted that image completely. So right now, you know, if we do a Docker image LS here, there is no web server image at all. But now let's load it in from that uh, file that we just had here. So just like uh, the save command, we provided output. In this case, we can provide input or dash I for short here. And then we just provide the file name of the zip file that we have here. And now it's going to load in these layers in a very similar way to if you were to do a Docker pull from a registry here. And we can see the loaded image here is uh, all good to go here. And now if we do an LS here and grab for web server, we actually do see that the web server is available. Cool. Nice. So now let's go over maybe why you wouldn't want to use something like the Docker ID, because this is a very important aspect here. When we saved and loaded this image here, you know, we had access to the Docker image as well as its tag here. But yeah, let's actually try uh, deleting this again here. I'll just delete this whole entire image. Actually, no, I'm not going to delete the image yet. But yeah, let's go back to the save command here. But this time, well, hold on, I need to do um, an actual web server. I need to get the actual Docker ID. So in this case, yeah, it's 611 FAA. Cool. Okay. So now if we go back to the save command here and we just put in the Docker ID 611 F, whatever, you know, first couple characters of the ID is fine. This is going to create the same output file that we did before here, you know, web server.tar.gz here, but the Docker image and tag name is not going to be included here. So we can see this when we do a Docker load here, you know, we can just load the same input file as we did before, but notice now it just says loading image ID right before it said, you know, next to J web server, blah, blah, blah. But 
Now, if we were to go and try to grep out, you know, this web server here, well, it's still there because uh, I just created it before, right? So let's actually remove that one, sure. And then just to keep me honest again, we'll just load this in from here and it's gonna load it in from the ID this time around. And now if we go and we, you know, LS this out, it's actually not there at all. There's no reference to the Docker image and tag. So yeah, you can imagine if you were to moving this to your server, you probably do wanna have that image and tag. So that's why I would suggest doing that. But yeah, now I actually need to do a Docker uh, image pull here and I'll just pull the image back so we have it with the tag so I can play around with this a little bit more. Cool, okay. So that is saving loading in a nutshell, you know, saving the gzipped file here. Now let's say we can go over a one-liner command to save the image on whatever box you're running it on. In this case, you know, WSL2 on my dev box. Then we're gonna gzip it and then we're gonna send it over to a server. So off camera a little bit before, I did uh, create a server on DigitalOcean here. I'm just gonna SSH here on the bottom uh, window here. You know, this is not really running anything other than Docker. So let me do a Docker image LS here. We can see there are no images loaded here on the bottom at all. But yeah, now let's say we wanna save our image to a file, gzip it and then send it over. So I actually have the command written out here because you know why type that out manually. Um, but yeah, this is gonna run now. It may take like, uh, I don't know, a minute or 30 seconds, whatever it is, but you can see we're doing a Docker image save. Notice though, now we're not providing the output flag. Instead, we're actually going to be writing this to standard out. Then we're gonna be piping that into gzip because we wanna have the, the actual file itself gzipped. Then we're gonna SSH just like we did here. Um, you know, right now I have the user on the system here named Nick, so I don't need to explicitly type in a username. But yeah, it's gonna SSH into the server and then it's just gonna run Docker image load. Notice there's no input tag now because it's just taking the input from standard in that's being piped along here from gzip. So Docker image load already knows how to handle a gzip uh, input here. So things are going along. It's probably pretty close. I don't know how long exactly it's going to take here, but we can see that there is a loaded image here with uh, NickJJ, web server, blah, blah, blah. And if we go back down to here and do an uh, Docker image LS here, we actually have the image all loaded and ready to go. So now we can run it, do whatever you need to do with it. And we know that it has confidence based on, you know, it being saved over here. So yeah, that's going to do it for this video. Let me know in the con comments below if you have any questions. Let me, I'll do my best to answer all of them. If you liked the video, please give a thumbs up because it really does help a lot. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.